What's up, everybody, and welcome to this espresso shot of the ozone. So I'm out of the studio, folks. I'm living my life out and about traveling. I'm overseas right now, but just wanted to let you guys know that we're still thinking about you on the ozone. So we're going to give you a quick hit of the hot stories this week and what we think about them. I am your host, Omar Miller, and I'm here with my brother from the same mother, Terry Miller, also known as the icon with the E. And an E. And with an E. <laughs> in the place to be. So look here, we have some serious business going on. Uh, Wow, you see this news that came out about the Brazilian soccer team that got involved in this plane crash? Man, that's terrible. I think that they said, what, uh, three of of them survived out of the whole team? That's amazing, because looking at the footage on television, it's amazing that anybody survived that crash. I mean, that thing is just in bits and pieces. Well, there were six total survivors, I do believe, and um, man, that's tragic right there, a whole team. And not just the whole team, you know, the whole team and all of the, the other people on board, but from, I don't know if this is true or not, but from the early uh, uh, reports that they're talking about, it potentially has to do with them running out of gas. Yes, they said electrical or them running out of gas, which would, that's, a, man, how do that's you That's just run totally out of gas? tragic. Yeah, how do you, you run can't out of gas run out of money? gas. You can't do that. And so they, they're talking like the, the range for the plane was, I think uh, they said something like 1,600 kilometers. And they ended up doing like 1,675 kilometers or 1,680 uh, and kilometers or something like that because they had to go in a circular pattern for some reason. And I just I just can't – wow, man, my heart really goes out to those people and the people of Brazil and everybody who's praying for them right. because it, it's a – this is just – it's I really – not that there's any upside. It's a tragedy on a global scale. It's a tragedy on a global scale. It is. Yeah. It is, and I'm not the craziest football fan, but uh, I don't like to see anybody passing away behind, you know, foolishness and nonsense. Right. That's just negligence. Uh, That's just negligence. It's just gross negligence. You can't run out of gas on an airplane. It's just unacceptable. Um, But on a good note, who is full of gas is the Oakland Raiders. (laughs) Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Just win, baby. Just win. Yeah, what do you say about the Raiders now at nine and two? I right, come. All right, giving up thirty something points once again. <laughs> the classic Raiders. Don't worry. And winning be, once yeah. again. Now, where's my Where's my Charlie Sheen? A uh, uh, quick uh, uh, audio. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. They'll get it. And when they get it, it will be at the wrong time. I mean. The really wrong time. You can't give up thirty-two points a game. I do believe their defense is ranked like twenty-seventh. It's unacceptable. I don't, it, it's not. Uh, it's it's not high on the ranks. But let's look at the positives. <laughs> the positives are the silver and black are nine and two. And if you keep faltering around with these other AFC t- teams that are playing games, we're going to mess around and get that number one slot and that bye. And the Raiders are going to be a problem. Jack Del Rio's Oakland native got to find some way to tighten up the defense. The defense actually played well in the first half of this game, and I don't know what happened in the second half. Cam start picking them apart. Yeah, a couple of Hail Marys, and they're back in the game. But Oakland, man, they just need to get that defense together. Then maybe I'll be a believer. But right now, I'm not I'm not buying in. Well, a big piece of that is going to get determined by December 3rd, whether or not the NFL decides to reinstate Alden Smith. Because well, if they reinstate him, that dude makes a difference. He's a game changer, and I'm assuming that he'll come back in shape. Oh, no question. I'm sure he's ready to go, but I don't think they're going to be able to get by Kansas City. Kansas City is the real deal. They do have defense, uh, yeah. but I don't know. It, 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 I agree. That's I, at this point, I think that's their biggest test. It's going to be interesting to see what you know transpires and where the rankings fall out uh, and injuries and whatnot. I I actually have to say my heart was in my throat for a little bit because I thought Derek Carr was done when he oh, walked out. He he didn't look good, and his backup came in. I thought it was you out there. I don't know what was going on <laughs> with that bum wing. Yeah, with that bum wing oh, trying man, to but, deal. But his finger looked terrible. Oh, my God. His finger looked, oh, man. Ew. Ew. <laughs> it was been ten, ten times sideways. Oh, my goodness. It was bad news. It was bad news. Really bad news. Now, now tell me this. So, what do you think? It looks like Aaron Rodgers finally made an appearance in the league yesterday and uh, snapped that four-game losing streak. Uh, I still don't think that that necessarily means anything for this year, but it was interesting to see them bounce back. Yeah, well, he's been playing well for the past three games, but I don't think that it's enough. They, their team is not complete. They don't really yeah, have Yeah, they're defense. decimated. Yeah. They're and really the running game. 
Yeah, no running game, but James Starks is back and he's doing okay. But they don't really have anything to toot the horn about, and they're they're down too too far in the the standings, you know, to really make them. Yeah, play. yeah, they're down really far, just like the the Rams are down really far. Mm-hmm. And Jeff Fisher ain't looking so good with all that talk, Ram time talk. We ain't talking about seven and nine. We ain't talking about ten and six. I mean, what are you talking about? Because right now it looks like he's talking about four and twelve. <laughs> Well, and you finally give that kid a shot to play, and he's proven that he can carry the load. And that's shame on Jeff Fisher because he should have let that kid uh, start out the gate. There's no reason for that. That was unforgivable. And he hurt the organization and the city. Don't come to L.A. with garbage. We have enough on Don't come already. losing. <laughs> sure do. We don't have enough trash cans, and we're not going to go to the game if the team isn't winning. The, the, the novelty is only going to last for so long. Right. It's not like the Coliseum's the greatest place to go watch a game. Yeah, this is, it's just unforgivable because this kid actually looked halfway decent, and especially for his first two games. He put up 21 points. He threw three touchdowns in the, in the half. I mean, and You've been riding for the kid for a long time. You really wanted him to get his shot. Yeah, especially since you spent everything that the organization had to get him, and then you don't let him play. And it just sounds to me like it was another good old boy situation, and it just didn't let, let the kid play. Now, do you think it was a good old boy, or do you think that it was the classic ageism? Because to me, it felt like that they wanted to teach him a lesson about getting his, you know, his his backup action in before he got to be the man and get his shine. I felt like it was a good old boy because you have Case Keenum and Nick Foles that both were there and they just didn't, uh, you know, they let those guys do their thing and and play play the organization into the ground. And you had this kid that you spent everything on. I don't think it has anything to do with ageism. It's something to do with these guys having a guy that's their guy. But maybe the organization – wasn't behind Jeff Fisher. I don't know what's going on over there, but it's a debacle right now. And they look terrible. Sure is. And the there's, de- and there's the a lot of confusion, looks terrible. The which defense. is unacceptable. Oh, my goodness. You, you can't give up 49 points. I mean, and this is coming from a fan of a team who gives up 30-something every week. You can't right. give up 49 points. You can overcome 30 points, as the Raiders have shown you nine times this year. You're yeah. not going to overcome 49 points. Especially with a, a first-year quarterback. When, how about uh, how about this whole scenario, the drama that's going on with uh, Eric Dickerson, the greatest Ram? I'm not I'm not privy. What happened with Eric with ED? Oh wow! So so there's all this drama going on with ED. Eric Dickerson came out and said that he wasn't welcome on the sideline of the game. Said that he was told that he wasn't welcome. He came out and spoke on it and said that he, he's never going to be on the sideline again as long as Jeff Fisher's the coach. And the, the president of the Rams came out and said, whoa, 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 we need to talk about this and. There must be some miscommunication. Eric Dickerson is the most celebrated Ram in history. Uh, we definitely need to, to to reach out to him and figure out what the miscommunication was, blah, 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 blah. But it's, a, it's, it's news, and I don't know what it is, you know. I don't know where the – I don't know if it's just because Eric Dickerson is a winner and he doesn't like to see what's going on or if it's the fact that Eric Dickerson is a pretty vocal critic of uh, the Rams right now and has been all season, and they just don't appreciate it. Well, I don't think it's they. It's probably Jeff Fisher, and he doesn't want to be. He doesn't want anyone to say anything to him about his bad decisions right now. And you know, I think that the organization was just trying to hold out until they got that new stadium. But you know, you need to just let, don't throw good money after bad and let him go. You know, and just wow. let Jeff Fisher walk. So you're calling for Jeff Fisher's head? Yeah, pretty much. Wow, let Jeff eat cake just like that. <laughs> Just like that. Why not? I mean, this is not the Raiders. This is the Rams. Let's go. Whoa. Yeah, definitely not the Raiders because they're not 9-2. and two. <laughs> So it is definitely not the Oakland Raiders. Yeah. And that, speaking, of, speaking of losing teams that you like, besides the Rams, how about famous, famous down there in Tampa Bay? What happened to the Seattle Seahawks this weekend? Oh my my goodness, that was a debacle. You won't talk about. I have no idea what happened. It, <laughs> what happened? It, it, I was watching the game and I was thinking to myself, I was like, "Wow, Russell Wilson's gonna have to pull another rabbit out of his hat." Right. And the game kept going, and they just were getting dominated. I think there was the travel, maybe that got them. maybe that east, that west coast, east coast thing, but they this is down south. It wasn't. It wasn't like they were playing in condition. I uh, know. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> Make up anything new for him. It looked terrible. <laughs> five, five, five points. Nothing on offense, really. Uh, I, I mean, they, no they, action. Yeah, they went in there and they weren't prepared, and that's very unusual for a Seattle team that plays at the highest level. And it was very, very embarrassing. I mean, Tampa Bay, they, they're doing okay, but to lose like that is unforgivable. Not to that team. 
You just yeah. can't get that done. I know a lot of Tampa fans are really excited about it, but you just can't let that happen. You can't let that happen. That was dominant. And you can't let the Tampa Bay Buccaneers dominate you like that. They're not that good. You, they have one dominant receiver. They're <laughs> just playing simply not that good. Yeah, they have one dominant receiver, an above-average quarterback, and that's where it stops because they don't have a running game. The defense is not above average. And you're just watching the, the, the Seattle Sea Seahawks just fall apart. Wow. I, they better pull it together because uh, that is not going to beat the Dallas Cowboys, that effort that they gave up this weekend. And, and that's where it looks like they're heading towards, too. That sure that, does. Yeah. But you know what? Sure that, does. That team knows how to turn on the switch, especially around playoff time. So I can't really you know, say anything about them because they're always in contention, and you just can't act like that. that's not true. Seattle, oh, no, they're there. They're there. They're there every year. But, uh, you know, it, we've seen it time and time again, the dangers of thinking, oh, I can just turn it on. Yeah. You can't lose to, to teams. If you are going to lose, losing games like that, those kind of games you look back on and say, wow, they this is a game that they, they can come back to bite you. They can come back to bite you on your status as far as your the, the ranking, you know, and who you have to play early. They yeah, can come the back to bite field. in a lot of different ways. Yeah, the whole yeah. Field advantage is crucial because if you can just say if uh, – Dallas Especially loses, for them. Yeah, Dallas loses a couple of games, and then you can get them. You can get them at home. I mean, you can get Seattle can get Dallas at home in the cold. Where they have the twelfth man. Yeah, where they have the 12th and man. the rain and it's and, cold. Yeah, then it's a big. It's a game changer. Instead, you're playing grab ass on the field down in Tampa Bay. Play grab yeah, ass. My high school coach used to say, "A lot of grab ass going on." Wow. And what do you think about them hoops? Speaking of dropping games that they shouldn't drop, what happened to the Clippers? The Clippers just seem like they they dropped two games to teams that they definitely shouldn't have lost to, and their schedule's about to get real coming up. They got a showdown. They got a showcase showdown with the Golden State Warriors coming next week. They got the Pacers at home, the Warriors at home. Uh, they got they got some real teams that they got to play. And even though the road trip, I think they'll end up four and two on the road trip, losing to the teams that they lost to. I just I can't. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just can't <laughs> accept it. Classic Clippers. I told you this is what they do. They're giving up the Clippers. You have to you have to tighten up, man. For some reason, during the season, they lose focus. And they lose the teams that they shouldn't lose to. And I don't know if it's Doc or if it's the players or if it's a combination of both, but whatever it is, they need to get their act together if they want to be known as an elite team to take be taken serious. How can you take them serious? I mean, we've watched this wow. year in and year out. And every year, it's the same thing with the Clippers. They look great in the beginning. They fall apart in the middle. And then, you know, uh, they're so-so at the end. And get knocked out in the first round. <laughs> um, wow. Uh, i like a number two, please. A classic Clipper. Oh, good old Yankee Clipper. Can I get a friend of Mickey Mantle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's interesting as well. And then we had the fight this weekend where Vasil Lomachenko just totally and completely outclassed uh, Walters. I don't know yeah. what Nick Walters was thinking, man, because this dude, from what I understand, he got offered the same fight last year for more money and just didn't make the right decision and take it. Well, you know what, though? He's an elite fighter in the lower division, but uh, in the corner looked like they were – it was confusion in his corner more so than anything. It, 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 it seems like, like it's confusion in his life right now because right. No one took he, he took that time off. And then, but you know what? I've watched that kid fight before. He's actually good. Yeah. And he just got completely outclassed the other night. Well, Max Kellerman. To the point where he just had to quit. And he just literally was like, I'm, this isn't going the right way. Right. Max Kellerman uh, believes that Lomachenko is the best pound for pound fighter in the world, he said. A lot of people feel that way. I can't go that far. And I'm just not great. crazy for little man boxing. Yeah, me. But he does look great. I would like to see him. I actually would like to see him, uh, him and Mikey Garcia make a fight. And, and I know that he just stepped up to 130, but maybe because I think Mikey Garcia is at 136, 137 right now. But if him and Mikey Garcia would make a fight, that would make me more of a believer. Not that I don't believe that he's great. He's definitely one of your better, uh, one of the top little men going. I just don't know if, uh, I don't know, that pound for pound list is tough. Right. Well, he's, it, I, it, you know. he's a southpaw. He has great footwork. He has great hand speed. He has a little thump for a little man, so he's a problem. But He did I, have thump. He did have thump. Yeah, it does the, have thump, brother. Uh -huh, but the biggest problem is that I'm with you. I've never bought into the little man like that. I need you guys to at least get up above 160 before I can take you for real as being, you know, a pound for pound like that. You know, at least 160. I like one. I can go 150. I like yeah, I 140. 150. The 47.50 route 
yeah. you know what? I'm not mad at that 4750 uh, weight class because yeah, there's some interesting true. fights to be made there. Kell Brook, you know, like Kell Brook size, where you can you can float between 47 and 54. Right. You know, 60 might be a little too much for you, as we saw against with him against Golovkin. But uh, you know, 47 and up, I, just underneath that, it's tough for me to give you pound for pound. Um, it's just tough. As much as I love a Manny Pacquiao or Earl Spence or Chocolatito. Or Chocolatito. Really, if any of you, if I was going to go with a little man for pound for pound, it would probably be Chocolatito. Yeah. But um, just just without that one hit quitter knockout power, it's hard for me to give anybody the pound for pound because sure. that knockout power is, you know, it is what it is. It's devastating. It's a game changer. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Well, this has been a nice fresh espresso shot to wake you up, let you know we're still thinking about you on the Ozone. We'll come back at you sooner than later when we're both live in studio. But in the meanwhile, take care of yourselves, and we appreciate you listening.